For our project, we decided to take on live recognition of road images, including things like dashed lines, double yellow lines, and even orange barrels. Let's look at the challenges involved. Image processing to detect and track road lines would be simple if the conditions were ideal. However, typical road line data actually looks more like the image on the right with constant variations in lighting and consistency. The human vision system is capable of ignoring these variations and interpreting these images under a variety of conditions. The technology best able to adapt to such a case is Convolutional Neural Networks, or CNN. The effectiveness of CNNs has been proven in computer vision challenges, and our implementation strategy is to build upon some of the existing work done on the Jetson platform, use Google TensorRT to construct the CNN for a general vision application called DetectNet, and finally build our own training database with custom training tools and subsequently train our CNN using a tool called Digits. Along the way, we'll be modifying some of the DetectNet code and building some scripts to do batch processing for handling long image sequences. This is the source video we elected to use after a couple of failed attempts with a video in the car. This next section is what we'll use for our W yellow line and our dashed line video. And you can see that the dashed lines are, are kind of rough, not painted real well. The contrast isn't real sharp. And this next section here up ahead, right after this bend, we use this row of orange barrels in the first test. We are developing the code and demos you see in this video at two locations, Ann Arbor, Michigan and Austin, Texas. Hi, I'm David and this is the Ann Arbor Lab. Um, we weren't able to get the digits to run on the host machine, so we ended up using a um, 2 gigabyte laptop GPU to do all the training. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm, I'm Frank Raffioli. Welcome to the Austin Video Lab. This is Coco. It's my buddy and he's going to help me uh, point to all the objects here. Uh, so first of all we have the Jetson TX2 which is um, it's basically uh, it's basically a development console for um, vi visual AI. This is the host machine for downloading onto the Jetson and then this is the the Jetson control console here with some of the images that we're processing and over here is the um, the, the true thing and object detection table we've got our objects the, uh, the sheep or dog, however it gets recognized, the Granny Smith apple, the dolphin, and the orange. And we use these objects to, uh, when we're doing the startup for the Jetson to make sure that everything is working. Next we're going to zoom in on the features of the Jetson TX2 development system. Included are HDMI, USB, and wireless, and also a built-in camera, which we're going to demonstrate in the next clip. We're here in the Austin Video Lab to do a live demo of DetectNet on the Jetson. This is a Jetson TX2, and we've got it set up to detect dogs. And it's using the uh, Coco Dog preload uh, online. Now it, it's sorry the the stuffed toys that are featured in this demo are uh, Coco uh, here on the stick and uh, the sheepdog. So I will notice that the camera on the Jetson is upside down and sometimes it mistakes my hand or my head as a dog. In the panel you see in the lower right corner the camera on the Jetson's upside down and what you're seeing in the lower right hand corner is the um, the display uh, and uh, it shows the number of bounding boxes in the image as well as the location and uh, the bounding boxes is the blue surrounding the dog is very uh, apparent and uh, so it's set pretty sensitive because it's detecting my hand but if a dog is the only thing in the image it doesn't do a bad job at tracking the dog and go forwards uh, up and down as long as it's on a neutral background it seems to work better and also uh, larger and smaller and this is uh, exactly the same trick we're hoping to use uh, to detect bounding boxes around segments of road lines and uh, to, so to detect several bounding boxes in the image and to join them together. The neural net that we chose was DetectNet. Um, essentially it works by chopping the image into tiny pieces, usually 16 by 16 squares. 
and then it uses GoogleNet to classify each of those squares and finally it will use that output to try to construct bounty boxes for where it thinks the object is. For the training software we use digits I mean uns because unsurprisingly there was the most uh, documentation for how to deploy a, a neural net once it's trained with with digits that is deployed on the Jetson. The actual digits application is data server in a UI, a graphical user interface for training the neural nets and it's built on the open North source libraries cafe and OpenCV and then it employs uh, and and CUDA for GPU acceleration. So to illustrate the the TechNet neural net, we're using the digits feature where you can just test one image to see how the neural net model is doing. We'll give you the bounding box that it sort of found there. And then it gives you the output of each of the neural net layers. It starts with the raw data, and then it transforms it to the right dimensions, then it enters Google Net, got convolution layer, you can sort of see the line in one of those. And more convolution layers and pools, max pools. It eventually it gets to the inception layers, which is the majority of Google Net death wise, plus it's uh, has to go through all five pieces of it. So there's just a whole bunch of inception layers. Then there's a classifier and it spits out a bunch of maps that the DECnet has to use to reconstruct the bounding box that we saw at the beginning. So the the DECnet network outputs two primary errors that it uses to train bounding box loss, which is essentially the how far the coordinates of the predicted bounding box are from the actual. And then there's the loss coverage. That's basically what fraction of the object isn't covered. So we'll go to a live demo. We got something training here. Um, so this is the digits interface. You have the data set and job information, progress, hardware, utilization stuff. There's the loss graphs. So you can see the bounding box losses. And then there's the coverage losses. Those are generally start out pretty big and completely obscure the graph. And then you have the mean average precision precision recall. Those are always zero because the tech net errors out before we get a true positive. But it still works okay. Um, there's the learning rate. And then there's options to test it, test the network, but we can't use those right now because the GPU is a little busy. This is the custom ground truthing utility that we developed in LabVIEW. You notice that at the bottom are thumbnail frames, and you can click on them and go right to the frame. And anything that has a yellow box around it has already been ground truthed. So let's dive down into how this works by exiting and hitting control E to go to the block diagram. This structure here is a state machine and there's a number of states. And as an example, one of the subroutines here first opens the, the correct set of files based on a list. And then if we go down into this uh, sub VI, we'll see that this is a decimation routine to scale the image by a factor of seven. So the input image comes in. The first thing that happens is it split again into uh, red, green, and blue vectors. Each one of those is decimated by a factor of seven in return. Seven's a nice number because one-seventh of the image width is 122. And that's uh, a very simple but effective scaling process. Now we're going to demonstrate the ground tooling tool that Frank built. 
we start by navigating to the video frames folder and clicking on the current folder. We can filter the range of frames that we want. I'll choose 2600 to 2800 and an interval of 6. Now we can scroll through the frames in this range. The frames in yellow are already labeled, so we'll select the next one. The next step is to choose the type of object that we want to identify. We're going to go with barrel. Dragging the mouse places the corner of the box. We can enter the size of the box that we want. It appears below. We can use the arrow keys to more finely tune the box dimensions. Once we're happy with what we've got, we can hit save point and the box turns solid and we can continue the process. Once we're satisfied with what we got, we can check uh, the file that was generated. This is where our frames were and it creates this parallel label folder. We can go to the text file and this is the labels that we just created in kitty format. We've got the upper left corner coordinates of the box and the lower right coordinates of the box, x followed by y. The video you're about to see shows the results of our own ground truthing data applied to the input video frames and then deployed on the Jetson TX2. It's important to note that orange, where orange barrels don't exist, they're not detected. Let's go ahead and watch the video. At the beginning, there's no barrels, and then we'll notice that it's detecting the barrels, and sometimes more than one at a time. It's seeing the barrels that are closer a, a lot easier than the barrels that are further away. Now that the ground truthing data has ended, we'll see if it still detects barrels. And it does. Well, I've really been looking forward to getting results of the dashed white line tests and data and to see the images live. One of the things that in hindsight we probably could have done better is truthing the lines that were uh, a little bit less obvious. Now let's look at the video see that it's starting to pick up a few uh, false positives like the double yellow line on the left and it's not doing such a good job of picking up the white lines with poor lighting but as we get up here towards the Congress Street Bridge the, uh, when the lighting gets better right after this lane change and you can see now that it's starting to pick up more of the lines as well as the lines on the right side too so this is now looking like a, a pretty viable detector although it does still need some work but uh, as you can see it's the the boxes are pretty well centered on the white lines for a final result we'd like to show how the CNN tracked the double yellow line let's watch the video starting out we do see a couple of false positives here in the trees and notice that the bounding boxes they get larger as the as the features get larger so and it's also picking up on some very faint yellow lines to the left side of the main yellow line and uh, again the bounding boxes get larger as the as the line looms into view and covers more of the image and uh, you can see as we're crossing the bridge it's taking in the entire segment of the yellow line and also several smaller frames are appearing several smaller bounding boxes and as the line disappears uh, so so do the bounding boxes. One of the things that we discovered from this project is that the TechNet is able to find lines and construction barrels pretty easily. This simplifies the solution because we can use essentially the same approach to detect any object that we need to find, and the neural net handles much of the nuances specific to each object. Going forward, one thing that we could do is gather a whole lot more data in order to allow the neural net to generalize better. Also, we could could fit lane bounding functions to the bounding box locations in order to f provide features like lane assist. Inverse perspective mapping would be useful if we were doing this because it would provide an overhead view instead of a perspective. Alternatively, we could use segmentation neural nets to classify each pixel as in the lane or out of the lane. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.